As we continue our series on Caribbean personalities who have made their mark on the world stage, we turn our attention to Kwame Turi, popularly known as Stokely Carmichael. Stokely was born in Trinidad, but spent most of his life in the United States of America and Africa. Like fellow West Indian Marcus Garvey, he made his greatest contribution to the black struggle in the United States. A revolutionary political activist, Carmichael's name is synonymous with black power, the black consciousness movement that swept the US in the 1960s. He was a leader of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, and for a brief period joined the Black Panther Party. Later, he co-founded the All-African People's Revolutionary Party and remained its leading voice until his death in November 1998. Black nationalists, Pan-Africanists, socialists, revolutionary, Stokely Carmichael was a fierce and uncompromising defender of African dignity, pride, and humanity. Today, we look at the thoughts and philosophy that drove this soldier of the African freedom struggle. To help us with this task, is an outstanding activist scholar, Dr. Acklin Lynch. The thoughts and philosophy of Stokely Carmichael, that's our show on today's edition of Carib Nation. Don't go anywhere. Carib Nation is up next. Welcome to Carb Nation, Dr. Acklin Lynch. Welcome once again to Carb Nation. I know the last time you were here, we talked about CLR James. Um, in my introduction, I mentioned Stokely Carmichael's name alongside Marcus Garvey. And I want to put him in the same category of CLR James and George Padmore and Walter Rodney, um, Caribbean scholars and activists who have played on the world stage. Am I correct in doing but so? I, I think so. And uh, you have other people like Michael Felwell and Ivanhoe Donaldson and Cortland Cox who were colleagues and worked with, uh, with, with Kwame uh, you know, during his time. Um, you also have people like Blyden in the 19th century who came here and, and, and played a major role in the shaping of this democracy. He was from the U.S. Virgin Islands. Yes, yeah. right. So, so there, there's always been a connection between the Caribbean and uh, the struggles of the people in the Caribbean and uh, the United States and North America. Uh, Toussaint Louverture and the Haitian Revolution influenced undoubtedly the slave revolts here of Denmark Vesey, uh, Gabriel, T Gabriel Prosser and, De and uh, Nat Turner and many others in the early part of the of the 19th century, so there has always been that linkage. So 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 Kwame Ture is consistent inside of um, that uh, historical tradition mm -hmm. in the New World, in the Americas, where uh, one has that integrity and courage and, and dignity with regard to the ongoing processes of revolutionary struggle. His major contribution to um, political thought and, and action um, was the whole question of black power. Um, let's talk a little bit about black power, both within the context of the 1960s black struggle here in the United States and further mm -hmm. afield, but also in the context of that long tradition of struggle starting way back um, in, in, in the period of slavery. Yeah, well. From, from the very beginning, uh, from the, the Middle Passage, from the uh, castles of, of West Africa, the places where um, Africans were enchained and housed, there's always been a resistance. Resistance has always been an integral part of the, of the experience of the African. Resistance against the condition under which, the humiliating condition under which he he or she had been exposed uh, or, or, or had been indicted to, uh, and that is uh, the question of slavery. The essence of that experience of resistance is uh, the qualitative determination 
to be in charge of one's destiny, to define oneself, to define one's place and hunger, to take that uh, 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 environment and give it shape, give it destiny, give it morality, give it integrity. Uh, and in so doing, that um, um, exudes power. Any, any, any time uh, an individual or a group of people or a nation of people uh, are, are, are prepared to make themselves clearly understood and known about who they are and what they represent and where they come from, that is a statement of power. And, and uh, uh, prior to, 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 to that notion of black power, uh, it, has, it had always been felt by the dominant forces in, the, in, in, in American society, uh, by whites, through their educational institutions, through their religion, through um, their, 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 their political institutions, etc. that power was, was not something that, 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 that black people could accrue to because they were brought here as slaves. Uh, but they never, never uh, accepted the notion of being impotent. Mm -hmm. and, and consequently, there, was, there always had been developed a sense of power. That m manifested itself in Harriet Tubman. That manifested itself in Sojourner Truth. That manifested itself in Frederick Douglass. That manifested itself in Sinke. That manifested itself in Kwame Ture, in Asata Shakur, in whoever. We have been people. And that, 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 that power has been manifested spiritually, politically, aesthetically, uh, and, and uh, in, in the arena of, of politics. So when Stokely made that cry for black power um, there in the 1960s, he was taking that struggle that you, that resistance that you um, spoke about to what, a high height, yes. a higher level? Yes, he was, he was certainly taking it to a higher level. And, and it frightened the nation, it frightened the journalist. Uh, it, it was something that was beyond cliché. Uh -huh. You know, at the time, uh, the civil rights movement had a sense, uh, had, already, um, had already established certain cliché statements, you know, we will not be turned around, we will not be moved, which were powerful statements coming out of the tradition of, of, of spirituals and, and folk songs and so on, uh, which were self-determining um, uh, uh, statements and songs and, 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 and sermons from preachers. Mm -hmm. However, when he talked about bla black power, it, it took it to another level. You see, he went, he went to the mountaintop, to use the cliche of, of Dr. King, but the newspapers and, uh, uh, couldn't grasp it. And, and, and therefore, what they wanted to do is to, is to create a controversy around it so that it would, would self-destruct, you see? Mm -hmm. So all kinds of interpretations, what do you mean by that? What did he mean <laughs> by black power? He, he simply meant the assertion to state one's political identity, one's political capacity, one's political um, uh, uh, representation in a space that belonged to black people. So it was more than just political rhetoric. It was an affirmation of it culture. Was an affirmation of everything. It was economic. Yes. It was all embracing. It, that's right. That's right. And uh, the people who had been marching to the beat of the civil rights movement with Dr. King suddenly woke up. And here was something new before them. How did they react? I, I'm not even sure it was new. I thought, I believe that it was always in the conscience of the masses of the people. Okay. But once they heard it, they clicked on, uh -huh. and therefore they, they took it and, and and ran with it. They began to say it and affirm it and assert it, uh, so that uh, 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 what 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 uh, Kwame did was just to create that wellspring of power mm -hmm. inside of people that allowed them to go to, to the next stage. That was done in the Haitian Revolt. That was done in the Palmares in, in Brazil. Uh -huh. That was done historically in, 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 in the assertion of, 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 of Sojourner Truth, who, say, who spoke before an all-white audience and says, ain't I a woman? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that, is an, that's the, that was done by Ida B. Wells. You see what I'm saying? And, 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 and the people took it because it was already with them. They, had, they already had that. Because one cannot engage in that kind of historical struggle against that kind of oppression and that kind of, you know, we were up against the government, we were up against paramilitary forces, we were up against the Klan, we were up against everything, the newspapers, we were up against the world. Mm -hmm. 
but, but had within us once it was said, once it was affirmed. And one only affirms these things because they are the results of other people's feelings at that, moment, at that point in time, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. When, when, when uh, Kwame they made the battle cry for black power and uh, the, the masses of African people in this country and also outside of this country, of this country. in the Caribbean, in Africa, um, began to hold on to this cry and to, to, to move with it. What, what exactly was he doing for the, the, the whole Pan-Africanist well, concept? Well, you, you must remember the two things. One, the 1946 conference, Manchester Conference, which asserted that Africa would be independent and free within a short space of time, and in which Du Bois and Nkrumah and Padmore and others began to lay the groundwork for what would take place in Ghana and West Africa. Uh, the coming out of, of, of prison uh, uh, by Kwame Nkrumah, right. who himself asserted black power. Right, right. <laughs> you yeah. see what I'm saying? In his political campaigns, that was the affirmative cry. Do you see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Without, without, without dealing with the words now, it was the same thing that we were going to take over mm -hmm. the Gold Coast and that we would change it and we would bring the Kingdom of Ghana back mm -hmm. onto the African landscape. We would Africanize the entire continent. Do you see? And that's what inspired. So in 1958, that, was, that had already taken place, which inspired Lumumba and, and Kenyatta and others to go forward. Uh, again, the assertion. So that, so that the, 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 b between uh, uh, 1958 in Ghana between, uh, and 1965, uh, 66, uh, as, 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 as Carmichael begins to move uh, people to another level. And, and you've got to understand, too, that the other part of it, too, that he was a very young man. Yes, and this yes, inspired yeah. young people. You mm -hmm. know, this, is, this was the voice of young people, you know, moving beyond the veil, breaking through in a society. Do you see what I'm saying? That had never dared to believe that a voice so young could be so powerful. Do you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? And, and that, that was very real. So that, so that Kwame, Kwame Nkrumah, Sekou Toure, Nelson Mandela, Eric Williams, and, 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 and Norman Manley in, in the Caribbean, the Pan-African voice everywhere was, and, and Stokely just simply picked it up and breathed it. Mm -hmm. He gave the word its definition. He spoke the word. And therefore, when the word went out, which had already belonged to the people, mm -hmm. I remember now, uh, well, you know, African nations one after another became independent between 1958 and 1970. Mm -hmm. Do you see? It led us. It led us in the assertion of the music of John Coltrane. It led us into the assertion of the music of, of Archie Shep. It led us into the assertion of, of Max Roach and others who were talking about freedom now sweet, of James Brown, who was saying, open the door. Mm -hmm. You know, it, all of that was the ground swell, and Carmichael was the voice, was the, was, 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 the, was, was the person who touched everyone at that moment in time, and it reflected and manifested itself all over uh, the, 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 the African world. When Carmichael spoke about black power, he was talking about uh, black self-development, developing the black economy. Mm -hmm. He was talking about uh, the linking up um, of uh, people here in the Americas mm -hmm. um, with their, their heritage in Africa. But let's talk about the, e the economics a bit, mm -hmm. because I think that is sometimes lost on people. Yeah. Um, elaborate for us on, on the, the economic the, the aspect of right. black power. There are two problems. Um, one, coming out of slavery, in which we, our labor had been totally exploited, it was an uphill battle to develop economic empowerment from, in this country, 1866 to 1958. Mm -hmm. It was an uphill battle. However, in that uphill battle, black people were able, in a segregated world, to develop that economic power, okay. right? At, the, at that point in time, in the civil rights movement, we moved to another legal stage in the battle, in which we wanted to not only strengthen what was done in, in, inside of the black community economically, but we wanted to eliminate the barriers of not just segregation in terms of um, 
you know, education and, 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 and health and, 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 uh, and you know, housing, etc. But the barriers that had been established in the economic order. And it was very obvious that since we had played a major part, black people had played a major part in building this nation from its inception right up through the 50s in its military industrial complex, in its agricultural sector, in its, in its, um, in its uh, industrial growth, accelerated industrial growth. We, we had played a major part in it as labor. Then it meant that we had to now move from that level into a level where we could have a stronger economic base. Mm -hmm. In, in the society in the 60s, so that it was not simply uh, give me all the keys to the political kingdom and everything will come afterwards. Carmichael was concerned both with building uh, a sustainable, viable, and strong economic base on the history that had, come, that had developed, and uh, as well as political, in, political institutions and academic and intellectual institutions that could provide the infrastructure for that. What happened and why it became dangerous is because the society at that point in time was about to shift the agenda, arguing the case that what black people wanted was not economic or political or intellectual power or spiritual power, but what black people wanted was to integrate into white America, mm -hmm. to get jobs in the larger system, to be part of Hollywood, to be part of Wall Street, to be part of... Of, of, of the governmental structure. And Malcolm had warned us about that question. Do you see what I'm saying? Because he saw it on the horizon. And, Cam, and, and, and Kwame understood what Malcolm was saying, and, and, and uh, that the, the authenticity of our struggle was not to integrate, we were told about integrating, was to begin to shore up, begin to develop an infrastructure that would provide economic, political, intellectual, and spiritual power, mm -hmm. Infra an infrastructure that would be that strong that could sustain our lives in the new world, not only, not only here, but in the new world and in Africa too. Because he always saw the link between the, the, our capacities here, our productive mm -hmm. uh, abilities here, and its linkage to Africa. So he was talking about something that w was different from the agenda. The agenda of the Rockefellers at the time was an agenda of integration in which they would provide certain elites with opportunity. Mm -hmm. That was the agenda of, yeah. of, of, of Lyndon Johnson and the Rockefellers. In fact, in fact he likened the situation of uh, African Americans to the colonial situation yes, in Africa and the yes, Caribbean. Yes, he did. Talk yes. a little bit about well, that. Well, he did because, <laughs> you see, at the time, what America had done successfully in its foreign policy and in its ideology was to argue the case that it was anti-colonial because it was uh, uh, the paramount nation in the, in, the, in the 18th century that fought against British colonialism. Uh, you know, argued that the war of independence was, was essentially that, and it built a constitution and, and developed a, a nation state that, 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 that did not uh, accept colonialism. But, but, but that was an illusion. That was not real. America was a, 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 coloni a, a colonizing uh, a country. Uh, not before we even start with the uh, with, with people who were here, whether they, they be Africans or indigenous people mm -hmm. or, or Hispanic people who had been colonized. America, remember after the Spanish-American War, had colonized Puerto Rico, uh, Cuba, and, uh, and, and the Philippines. Under the Truman Doctrine. Uh, 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 no, no, even before the, the right, Truman right. Doctrine. This was the Monroe Doctrine. The, sorry, the Monroe Doctrine. And the Monroe that's Doctrine. what I meant. The Monroe, and then the, later on, it's going to the, turn into right. the Platte Amendment, yes, et cetera. The Monroe but, Doctrine. But they had, they had colonized those, uh, and the Virgin Islands, which they bought, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. But, but, but what you are seeing is, is that America had become actively involved in the colonization process, both economically, politically, and, 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 and intellectually. It, it, it carried its notions of superiority. It carried its ideas of corporate um, uh, domination into S Central America, into the Dominican Republic, into Haiti, in other parts of the Americas, you know, again. Right. So it was not only the, the colonization of Puerto Rico and, and, and Cuba in, in the Caribbean area, but the domination by, you know, uh, by, by American corporate undertakings in, 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 in by, you know, um, in, in Nicaragua and, 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 and El Salvador and Honduras, et cetera, mm -hmm. and Guatemala. All right, that happened. 
Uh, in addition to that, uh, America was, 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 was playing a game at the end of World War II to neutralize the Russian argument or the socialist argument that the socialists were interested in uh, uh, workers of the world unite, mm -hmm. uh, people move from under the, the, the domination of imperialism. You should have saying. So here you are, arguing the case of being anti-colonial, arguing the case of uh, 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 against communism because you don't want to be accused of an, of being an imperial an imperial um, nation. You mm -hmm. see, having the military industrial capacity, want to be a colonial nation and to be uh, an imperial nation. So the evidence is there. But now, how do you develop the propaganda to move away from that? You see what I'm saying? So that Carmichael was coming back to put that, to challenge that propaganda, arguing the case that Woodrow Wilson, Teddy Roosevelt, uh, uh, Harding, and all these people had been engaged in colonial enterprises. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And that colonialism was, 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 was always part of the agenda of domination. Uh, of, 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 of the American side. This is, where Cam this is what Carmichael was arguing about. And that as an imperial nation, in effect, even in China, as we were part of the Chinese, you know, um, and we were you know, joint exploiters of China together with the European nations, right. that we were indeed uh, mm -hmm. uh, acting out the same imperatives of colonialism. The imperatives of colonialism being military domination, economic domination, uh, racial arrogance and superiority, yes. uh, uh, and, and cultural, cultural. Uh, imperialism. Mm -hmm. You understand know, what I'm saying? So all of that. And Carmichael began to attack that. And therefore, he became dangerous intellectually in that. Again, another extension of, of Malcolm's argument, uh, 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 which later on Dr. King will come to grips with as he begins to understand what imperialism was all about, we, and which the Black Panther Party held on to, George Jackson and, and Huey and others, uh, and Angela and others, uh, as they tried to understand the relationship between imperialism and colonialism. Carmichael was not afraid to confront the issue of violence. Talk mm -hmm. about that, because um, some people describe him as a, as a violent man. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Um, Rap Brown used to say that uh, America is as, uh, is as um, violence in America is as, as American as apple pie. You know, it's just, this is a country where this is a country built on violence. Uh, the genocide of the indigenous people, the expansion into the West, slavery in, in itself was a, was a, was an enormously violent experience, and uh, we've continued in in that tradition, the engagement in certain wars and so on. So the violence is a very uh, is a reality in the society. Uh, we settle problems in violence and so on, or sports, our, our whole culture, uh, our films and movies and everything, television, mm -hmm. you know, uh, express uh, uh, the violence of the society. Um, what, what Carmichael was looking at, uh, having been inspired by Franz Fanon's Wretched Earth right. and the writings of Fanon, Having been inspired by, again, Malcolm, who understood the nature and character of violence in the city, and having been uh, 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 inspired by the historic colonial struggle and the historic sense of resistance, Carmichael saw, naturally, violence as being the only mechanism, the only instrument, the only way out of one's oppression, of one's condition. Uh, and he felt that one had to do that. One had to defend oneself. One could not be lynched and accept that. You know, simply, you know, mm -hmm. one could not be brutalized. One could not suffer the sharecropper's experience. One could not have that innate fear that, that, that pre prevents the, the individual from, from, from voting, from, 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 from talking back. Because all those are forms of violence repressed in the individual. And he felt that. That, that violence as a creative and spiritual sense of expression had to, to, to take place. Mm -hmm. So he engaged, he engaged the notion of violence and nonviolence at an intellectual and philosophical level. He didn't come to violence as any uh, irresponsible young person. He studied the issue very carefully. He studied Gandhi carefully. He studied 
uh, the, 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 the revolutionary struggles in, in, in Africa and Asia as people sought independence. And he recognized in those, he studied the American uh, 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 revolution and war of independence and the Haitian revolution. And as a result of that, he was a very stu serious student. You know, Cap Michael mm -hmm. was not any fly by night person. He was very, very serious and dedicated to the study of philosophy, to the study of political science. Mm -hmm. And as a result, came to the conclusion that violence is, 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 is a way of life. Uh, one says, we come to the same conclusions. Militarists come to the same conclusions that violence is the only way in which you can re resolve the mm -hmm. problems of, of contention, contending, for the, contending yeah. forces, you know, here and around the world. It's not, it's, it's nothing, it's nothing new. And of course, Carmichael makes the differentiation between the violence of the oppressor and uh, the violence that you use to counteract um, the moves of in, the In which you use to liberate yourself. yourself. He, he, he was very clear in, in, from you know in the, the, the battle Quickly, of ideas. Ackley, yeah. he was also a socialist, and uh, this whole question of race and class uh, has, has been around for a long time, still is with us, and will be with us for a very long time. How was Carmichael able to synthesize the two? Where you know uh, when when Kwame started as a young man, um, I believe I would uh, from you know when I when I knew him is that. Kwame was very much of a nationalist as a young man, mm -hmm. um, trying to examine the problem critically, the problem of, 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 of our oppression, historical oppression, and, and, and exacting actual oppression, uh, and, and trying to understand the, the character of, 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 of a liberation struggle for all peoples around the world. He saw it from a national perspective, and uh, he felt that black people had to be historical respo historically responsible for their own liberation, mm -hmm. and, and, and that they should work towards that end. It is a sense of feeling. He, Kwame had been in, in SNCC for four or five years, and, and Kwame never objected to, 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 to white people or, or Native American people or Hispanic people being involved in, in the struggle at, uh, at any point. But Kwame noticed inside of SNCC, like others did, at that point in time in the Southern movement, that when whites entered into the arena in the struggle, in the context of that struggle, that they took certain roles. And that as they did that, they, they dominated the, the, the discourse. And on and that note, Dr. Lynch, yeah. um, I'm afraid that her time is up. Uh, perhaps the greatest lesson of Stokely Carmichael's life is the importance of commitment to defense and upliftment of one's people. The struggle to which Stokely dedicated his life is not yet over. So the best tribute we can pay to this son of Africa is to continue the freedom struggle. As Stokely Carmichael Kwame Ture would say, organize, organize. Until the next time, this is David Hines thanking you for tuning in to yet another edition of Carib Nation. And remember as always, our motto on this program is one people, one culture, one Caribbean, one nation. See you next time.